Hi folks, today I'd like to show you how anyone, even a do-it-yourselfer like myself on a limited tool budget, can perform a complete electrical diagnostic of the fuel pump on your Honda Accord, and by doing so get a really comprehensive view of the state of health of your fuel pump. And you can do that all from right here under the hood without even getting any gas on your hands. So why might I want to do that? Well, you might be like me, you put a lot of miles on your vehicle, but you still need it to be really reliable. So it's nice to have a two minute diagnostic you can run every once in a while right under the hood and make sure your uh, fuel pump is in tip top shape. It turns out that usually a failing fuel pump will show signs of problems on this test long before it leaves you stranded on the side of the road. Secondly, you might be watching this video because you have a fuel pump problem or you think you have a fuel pump problem and you can follow the diagnostic um, process here and determine for sure if the fuel pump is at fault before you go throwing parts at the problem. You are looking at the under the hood fuse box for the Honda Accord and for this test we'll be monitoring the current going to the fuel pump and it's easy to do that at the fuel pump fuse. So the fuel pump fuse is number 40. It's a 20 amp and it's labeled fuel, uh, fuel pump. And Honda provides a nice little puller tool in the lid. So this is the fuel pump fuse. So we can pull that out. It's actually a, a mini fuse. It's a low profile mini. And then we'll insert a current loop in its place. And then we'll come in and hook up our current clamp onto the loop. Let me zoom you out a little bit here. Most of you have probably seen a setup like this before, but for those of you who haven't, let me just explain what's going on. The fuse buddy or current loop, uh, the whole point of it is just to force the current that would have gone through the fuse to go up through this wire so we have a convenient place to hook on the uh, current clamp. The current clamp provides a way to measure the current flowing through that wire without breaking the circuit by sensing the magnetic field produced by that current. I'm using the Handtech CC65 current probe. It um, goes up to a maximum of 65 amps and is priced pretty cheaply and affordable for a hobbyist. And because we want to look at the what the current's doing as a function of time, see the waveform of the current, we need an oscilloscope to capture that waveform. So I'm using the PicoScope, the um, cheapest PicoScope available. I like the graphical user interface that comes with it. It has a lot of um, automotive specific functions, but it's really um, not necessary for the job. You could use the cheapest scope you can find. Um, would work just fine for doing this testing. And I've seen them sometimes for as low as 30 bucks. Okay, so now I've got you set up so you can see my laptop screen. And this is the main interface window for the PicoScope. The first thing we'll want to do is come in here and set up the probe so it knows that there's a current probe attached. I'll just add a bit's resolution enhancement. Now we'll want to change the time base to something much lower, maybe 500 milliseconds per division. So now we have um, a half a second between each of these vertical lines and we'll, we'll want to change the vertical scale as well to maybe um, plus or minus 20 amps say. So now we have um, a picture here of what the current um, in the fuel pump looks like as a function of time. Since the vehicle's off it's clearly zero all the time. But what we want to do first is capture what the fuel pump current looks like when the fuel pump first turns on. So I'll set up a single trigger and then I'll move the trigger point to be when the current first exceeds, let's say, maybe 6 amps or so. Now on these 10th generation Accords, you can activate the fuel pump by keeping your foot off the brake so that it doesn't start and then just pressing the start button twice. And you can see when I do that, that the fuel pump turns on and runs for a short period of time. So you see a large inrush current to begin with. And then as the motor uh, spins up in the fuel pump, the current goes down to its nominal operating value. So it looks like the amount of time it's on for is approximately 2.07 seconds. The peak current should be about 
just about 15 amps and the operating current once the pump gets up to speed should be about 4.8 amps so that's a good indicator of health alone is just what the DC average current is to your pump so now we want to look um, zoom in on the waveform of what it looks like when uh, the pump is operating to get a little bit more detail so I'm going to increase the um, current per division to about 10 amps because we're only going to be interested in what's happening um, in this small region when it's operating normally not on the first overshoot and then we'll want to zoom in time wise so maybe um, increase that or decrease the time per division to maybe five milliseconds per division in this case we're going to want a um, repeat um, trigger and we'll want to set the trigger to right around where it was operating at um, 5 amps or so. Okay, now I'm going to run the fuel pump again by pressing start twice. Oops, didn't have this trigger set. Try that again with it triggered. Pressing the start twice. Okay, so now we captured um, a lot of detailed waveforms for what the pump looks like, or the current to the pump looks like when it's running normally. One nice thing about the PicoScope is you can it captures um, many frames, so you can grab a lot of data and then look back through them. Um, so the first thing we want to do is determine the speed of the pump. And to do that, we need to know how many segments there are on the commutator. So each of these little pulses in current is when the brushes um, in the motor pass over another segment um, of the commutator. And then there's a pulse of current that goes through that winding. So if we can count how many are in the cycle uh, in a full revolution, then we can calculate the speed that the fuel pump is running at. So to do that, we need to find some... Uh, repetitive pattern in this waveform and this one's pretty similar so it might be a little bit tricky but I think we can do it so if you see here um, there's three current pulses that are all about equal to the line followed by a smaller one and then there's two up near the line followed by two low ones so let's see if that pattern repeats so here's another three up near the line followed by one lower one two higher ones and two lower ones so it looks to me that if we put the cursors on that sequence so that's the first of the three um, higher pulses so you can see again this repeating pattern so we've got three high pulses a lower pulse two high pulses and two lower three high one low two high two low so that's a repeating pattern and the reason for that is that each little winding um, segment connected to two commutator um, portions it has a little bit different resistance and takes a little different current flow so the amount of current varies um, ever so slightly between those different commutator segments and you can often detect the pattern um, this way and so you can see there's one two three four five six seven eight different commutator uh, segments on this particular motor I think they're commonly between six and eight um, I know the Honda's uh, fuel pumps on previous generations also had eight commutator segments. So now that we know there's eight um, segments, the time we have to go through those eight segments is the time it takes the motor to make one uh, complete revolution. And that's where I've got the cursor set up to be. And that, according to the readout here, is 11.49 milliseconds which also, as you can see down here, is 87.06 hertz, or 87 times that the um, motor would go around per second. So if we want to convert that to um, RPMs, then we can take the 87.06, and we can multiply that between by um, 60 seconds in a minute and we get uh, 5,224 revolutions per minute. So it's running about 5,200 RPM. So that's another good indicator of fuel pump health is um, how close it's running to that speed. I wanted to illustrate what's physically happening during these waveforms 
I've got an armature out of a DC motor here. It's not out of a fuel pump, but it's just to illustrate. So in a DC motor, there's uh, two brushes uh, that come in from the sides, and these deliver uh, DC power to the armature. And as the armature spins, they're constantly moving on to different commutator segments and supplying current at the right point in the coils to produce the right magnetic field to spin the motor. So as the brushes go from segment to segment on the commutator, there's normally a little uh, disturbance in the current, and that's what you see in the ripple waveforms. And by looking at little differences and maybe the resistance of the different um, coil segments, we could actually determine that there were eight commutator strips just from those minor uh, differences as we rotated around. So there are eight commutator uh, sections as we rotated fully around one revolution. But what happens is if you have a bad motor, then as it spins around, perhaps the brush goes over a bad contact area where maybe it's disconnected from the winding or just worn too low to make good contact. And at that point, the current through the motor will momentarily drop a lot and then recover once the motor spins onto the next segment. Or perhaps there's shorts in the winding, and as the brushes go over that segment, the current increases a lot. Okay, so just to illustrate that for you a little bit better, these are some fuel pump waveforms that I found um, at PicoScope's website. I'll put a link to them in the description of this video. But here you see a known good fuel pump where you can see a really regular pattern of ripple. So um, every little um, segment of ripple is much like the others. So indicating a good pump. And then here you see a known bad waveform where you can see that the waveform is really irregular. So some pulses go up a lot higher and you have this irregular pattern. And then here's another waveform of a failing fuel pump. In this case, um, as the armature spins around, it actually goes to a point where the current goes to zero, that there's probably a segment of the commutator that's completely bad or disconnected from the windings. So this is a typical case where if the motor um, happens to stop with the armature on that contact it won't start up again so in these kind of cases that's where you can hit the fuel uh, tank and bounce the pump a little bit move the armature just beyond and then the um, fuel pump might run um, that way even with that dead segment but a sure sign that there's a problem with the fuel pump so the two key measures of health in the fuel pump, one is just looking at the waveform to make sure those, the ripple is nice and consistent. And then secondly, just looking that the average um, DC value during operation of the current is about right. So just to summarize then, for key on, engine off, uh, the known good fuel pump waveforms are that it takes 11.4 um, milliseconds for eight commutator bumps for one full revolution and that corresponds to a pump uh, RPM of about 5,000 RPM in an average current draw of 4.8 amps. So if your um, pump differs from these a lot, you know, say you measure 2 amps or 1 amp average current, then it's a pretty good indicator that you might have a failing pump. So the values are a little bit different if you perform this test with the engine running at idle probably primarily just because the um, voltage is a little bit higher with the alternator running. But in this case, with the engine at idle, the full period of the fuel pump takes 9.55 milliseconds, so a little bit shorter, corresponding to a pump speed of 6,300 RPM, and the average current is a little bit higher, too, at 5.1 amps. Thanks very much for watching, and if you like this video, hit the like button and if there's enough interest I'll try to make some more videos like this showing you how uh, you can use your current probe and scope to perform other neat diagnostics on your Honda Accord.